Lindbergh, New York, on retreat. The convent is no longer in existence there. It has moved to Augusta, Georgia. But it was holy ground where I always felt God's constancy and love. It was a place of renewal and restoration for me, pure gift. One year, and you can tell this was a number of years ago because I referred to one of the older sisters. One year, one of the older sisters who had become a dear friend asked if I would be interested in going with her on an eight-day silent retreat at a Jesuit monastery called Gonzaga, just north of Gloucester, Massachusetts. Now, many of you know me well enough to know that the thought of an eight-day silent retreat put the fear of God in me. <laughs> the mere thought of eight days of silence terrified me, but Josephine persisted and I finally gave in. Once there, I discovered that every day I would be meeting with the spiritual director for half an hour. I was asked to choose a piece of scripture that particularly spoke to me as my area of study, and that that would guide our discussion each morning. That was the only conversation I would have for the duration of the retreat. Gonzaga is on the sea cliffs above the Atlantic Ocean, and on my very first day there, and this is just to let you know that God takes care of us, I found a solitary place on the cliffs, in the rocks, with a very comfortable seat that had been formed by nature. It was there that I spent, literally, rain or shine, all my time with the exception of meals, my daily session with the spiritual guide, and my sleep time. There is no better place than the sea to reflect on the rhythms and reasons of life. My area of study was today's psalm, excluding four of the verses. Eight days to reflect on 19 verses of scripture provides an amazing intimacy with the written word and with internal thought. And those eight days were life-altering for me. Our Creator, the God who made us and breathed us into life knows all. We have no secrets from God. God is omniscient. God is witness to our every thought, word, and deed. We cannot hide from God. Now we all may have things we would like to hide from God. We all have some secrets we will probably never share with another human being. We are all human. And we do on occasion, and sometimes upon many occasions, behave badly. And we are both ashamed of and embarrassed by our behavior. That's okay. That is our opportunity for growth and development, for repentance and renewal, for making amends to others, and for forgiving ourselves, something that is often very difficult for us to do. We are far harder on ourselves than anyone else is, including God who knows us better than we know ourselves. But our God is both a loving and a merciful God. God forgives us over and over when we mess up. 
And God guides us in the image, I'm sorry, excuse me. And God guides us in the ways to be loving and giving, accepting and inclusive, with Jesus as our example of action and compassion. It doesn't get any better than that. My experience at Gonzaga was eye-opening, mind-opening, and heart-opening, deep and powerful. And it provided me a personal mantra directly from Psalm 139. Search me out, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well, whether there be any weakness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. If you have any time in the next few weeks, read Psalm 139. And leave out those four verses, you'll know which ones they are. And contemplate God's love, constancy, presence, and mercy as they play out in your lives. You might find the experience both eye-opening and breathtaking. Amen. Um,